So welcome to the Writer's Mindset series with myself, Yvonne Redden, and I am chatting to a variety of storytellers and writers to find out what inspires and motivates a writer. Is it a particular mindset that you can develop or are writers born with this gift of storytelling? And my guest this week is Vanessa Fox, also known as author Sam Blake. And we'll get into all that now in a minute. Vanessa, you're involved in every aspect of writing. And I can't wait to hear a little bit more about all this experience. And thanks for joining me today. Delighted. Thanks for asking me. Thrilled. And my questions are incorporating the five W's in writing. So I'm going to begin with when did all this writing begin for you? Where did it all start, Vanessa? Um, in 1999, back in the Dark Ages, uh, my husband went sailing across the Atlantic for eight weeks um, on a race called the Atlantic Rally Cruise, which takes you from, in fact, it takes you from the Canaries to, where did they go from? I think, it's, I can't remember if they ended up in the Canaries or start. I think they start in the Canaries and they end up in, anyway, I can't remember where they went. Yeah. So, but it took eight weeks. So I was at home, I was working uh, for event management company then, and um I knew a good few people here, but I didn't have any family here. It was very expensive to get back to the UK. And so I had, and I had no children. So I had very long, dark evenings ahead of me. It was in November. And um, I had an idea for a book. And literally, I just started writing it. And it's funny you should ask that today, actually, because I run a writer's group called Writers Inc. And I literally this morning, somebody asked me the same question yesterday in the group. And I put, I was making notes. I do these Tuesday tips every week. And I was just, I did the Tuesday tips on my starting point. And so I went back to that original manuscript, that first book that I'd written, um, to have a look at it, to see how truly terrible it was. And actually it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but it's, yeah, that's how it all started. And I, I think the bug just bit. And I was, I found that when you sit down to write it, you know, you sit down to write, I was writing longhand then and then typing it up in the weekends. When you sit down to write, you, you were taken away into this place mm -hmm. where time means nothing. And you'd be starting writing something and then you look up at the clock and it's four hours later. And I think once that happens, then no, you're the bug, good. Yeah. Yeah. And the bug just bites and that's it. And I didn't stop. Kept going. Did you not find that? Did you not have something like that, an inkling in you when you were younger or anything like that? Was there anything that was there from school? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've always loved writing. I always yeah. thought I'd write a book. Um, I think I did. I didn't ever think that. I, I just, I, yeah, I don't think I ever didn't think I would write a book. If you know what I mean, I just thought it would be something that I probably would do at some stage. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I'm a huge reader. Um, and um, and I love cry right crime, so I love yeah. crime. I love police, police procedurals and mysteries and things with, you know, things with that make you think. I like yeah. that type of book. I like so, um, yeah. So I think I just I think I always thought I would, but I didn't really know how. Well, I had you no. At that time, you had an eight week kind of window of something yeah. to do, so that was great. It's always about time as well, isn't it, Vanessa? It's making that time aside from the busy lives to just sit down and write. That's it's it. I mean, that's, that's key. Mm. yeah yeah but I think if you're determined you'll yeah. always find time and part yeah. of it is being focused um and deciding that this is something you want to do for you and therefore you find time so I don't now I don't watch the television I never know what's going on the television I don't go to the cinema um occasionally go to the theatre but you know I, I don't read the papers so I've you know I I mind time yeah, and that's what I suppose I, other people do. Other people do normal things and have normal lives. I, don't, <laughs> I just write. No, I don't watch much television at all, really. You know, I, I don't either. But I don't read enough either. And I think that from talking to lots of writers in this series, it's all about lots of reading. I need to schedule in an hour every day to read at least. Yeah. But, or even five minutes before you go to bed. Like whatever you few minutes, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I always, I tend to read before I go to sleep. And, I, and even if it's only 10 minutes or whatever, it just is you know, something. Even it's definitely time. essential in, in a writing career and in a writing, you know, as a writer. And mm -hmm. has there been many people who have been influential in your career? Um, well, yes, certainly. Been, um, God, yeah. Um, so a, a, a long time ago, when I, st I started writing at this point, and I was probably on book about book three, um, I organised a fundraiser for an Italian earthquake. So it was about, I think it was about 2004, something like that and uh, 2003 and I met um, an author called Sarah Webb who lots of yeah. you might have heard of yes. who at that point had written a whole pile of books I think and um, was very well connected in the community the writing community and we we realized we had lots of friends in common because her husband sales as well so this is the, was the link um, but we stayed friends and um, a few years later when I realized that I actually needed to learn how to write <laughs> and there were a few things that I really didn't understand um, and I wanted to set up Inkwell she was the person I called so yeah so she's been hugely I mean her advice to me just keep writing yeah was 
absolutely the best advice ever. I mean, that was just so simple. And it's just, you just it can take a lot longer than you think to get published. Because obviously we start off and we all think the first book we write is completely amazing. And that's completely right. Because yeah. if you don't think your book's amazing, nobody else will. But it might not be the first one that gets published. Um, yeah, so yeah. And it's a long process, it. isn't it? Yeah, you have to have determination, perseverance, and be prepared to learn as well because it isn't you're not taught fiction writing technique in school. So, yeah, it's definitely um, something I think that you can hone in on through education and through learning through workshops as well. I certainly yeah. that's that's probably where I started, and I met you before at a self publishing workshop. So it's definitely going getting in with people in the same genre and in the same yeah. area as well because you learn so much yeah. of everyone Alana Kirk really? was another influence for me as well I went yeah. to her yeah. memoir workshop and it was fabulous so no it's amazing I mean every time I speak to an author I do lots of author interviews loads yeah. of them but every time I talk to somebody I learn something new I mean yeah. literally every time there's a nugget of gold in every single interview and, and as an author I think you're sort of a bit like a magpie you're collecting ideas the whole time and yeah. they, they could be story ideas or they could be um, you know, for me, it can be business ideas or, or, you know, ways to improve my writing. And mm. I, so I'm, I'm sort of gathering all of those the whole time and listening to what people say. And everybody has tips and everybody has a way they do something that's a bit different to you that you can adopt. Yeah. And develop, and you know, networking is quite is, is very important, too, isn't it? Networking is hugely important. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I find I think it's just understanding the business. It's a very strange business and understanding the business and understanding how it works and why it works yeah. the way it does helps you enormously in understanding what what happens you know if you're getting rejected everybody gets rejected it's just a thing that happens you yeah. take it on the chin and get on with it and uh, but understanding why that's happening makes mm -hmm. a huge difference mm -hmm. um, and you can if you understand how the business works then you'll understand why so yeah and yeah networking and meeting other people and it's support because I think as a writer you work on your own mm -hmm. the whole time um, as I mentioned I run an online writing um, thing called Writers Inc and there's about 100 people in that and, they, and they're hugely supportive of each other it's a proper community mm. and um for me and I have my community and I've got yeah. my writing community and my you know everybody you have different different communities within your life but you need that actually, don't you you need that support yeah. you yeah. can't people do it understand anymore. what you're talking about exactly yeah, that's and is that did that prompt you to start up writing.ie yeah, so I set up originally back in the day when I realised I needed to learn how to write. Um, my husband was in the guards when he wasn't sailing. So he, uh, so I couldn't do an evening class. At that time, the only things available really were doing like creative writing evening class at a local college. That, that was yeah. the only thing I could find. And I couldn't get out like every Tuesday night because of his shifts. So um, I had the kids by then. So I um, thought, well, no, actually, well, I want to do one day intensive Work, workshops I also want to hear from best-selling authors because there's a reason why they're bestsellers mm. um, I wanted them to be in a nice place not in like a drafty you know community colleges are fantastic places but you know yeah. I just they can be quite cold <laughs> yeah exactly and you know Monday night you're exhausted and yeah yeah so um so I wanted them to be really nice and that's when I set up Inkwell so there were a few things that I wanted um to develop and I wanted to have like one day intensive fiction writing workshops um because that's what I needed and yeah. I would I wanted something I was going to enjoy and other people would enjoy and as it turned out there are an awful lot of people in the same situation as me which I wasn't really expecting yeah, well, that was good was good, good to know wasn't it exactly so yeah no so they were entirely set up for me it's definitely. full of resources for any writer looking for somewhere to go mm -hmm. one-stop shop it's definitely writing and also yeah. you can you know you can put in your own stories as well and you I've yeah. I've had a couple of things published on your various writing um setups on that as well which is lovely yeah. just to get see your piece up there you know kind of it published is. you know it it's is. And right yeah writing.ie literally grew out of ink well because there was no there was nowhere that was pulling all the information about writing yeah. in Ireland together so that's why it was set up but yeah we're looking for my mining, mining memories pieces of that's the one I did really. mining memory yeah so if anybody yeah. has any memory stories and they can be about anything from like last week to when you were five you know there can be memory pieces they're really sort of, I suppose, they're a bit like social history pieces, but they're yeah. um, they're really interesting. I just think find them fascinating. And also different as well. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah. one I did. I must, I'll put that up after with this, that you're looking for yeah. that. Yeah, and no, definitely looking for that. I people. will, yeah. Because everyone has stories in them. Do you know what I mean? It's just they getting do. That's them. it. And, and, and they've got really interesting ones. Yeah. And everybody has a story. And that's why yeah. I love talking to people. So Same. And your genre of writing you've mentioned before is crime. Why yeah. did you pick crime? I think because I read crime mm. um, and I'm interested in puzzles, as I say, I'm interested in mystery. I'm interested in learning something new when I write a book, when I, when I read a book. I want to, um, I always want to be challenged. So I don't want, you know, I want something that's going to 
I suppose you get me thinking. Stimulus um, and, the brain, yeah. Yeah, and that's and I, as I say, I love puzzles. I love you know all that type of thing. So yeah, so that's really what I. You what must I'm have like. watched a lot of movies in that genre then years ago because I mean straight away I'm thinking like the usual suspects. You know there were yeah. like th movies with twists in them. You must have liked things like that, did you? Years ago. Yeah, no, I, I'm really rubbish on movies. I yeah. haven't watched any. No, I, I'm a real movie. I, honestly, I can probably name them. Uh, the, I've probably watched ten movies in my whole life. No. I'm not that bad, but it's not great. So I've watched The Wizard of Oz a lot of times. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I read a lot. I think I just read loads, you know. Uh, yeah. It's the reading. Garden. Yeah, I'd be more reading of a narrative. read than a reader. But um, I like, is there, is there somewhere that you like to write, Vanessa? I know you live in a beautiful area. It, you've got probably fantastic scenery to look out a window at. You're lucky. Is there an area that you like to write? Or have you got your office? Have you got your space that you like to write? Um, I find writing my office really hard because I'm always mm. supposed to be, there's always something else to do here. Yeah. And it's always a mess. Um, so I, I try and divorce my my writing from my business stuff, if you like. So I always try and write somewhere else. So even at the, it can be the kitchen table. I set up in lockdown. I had a book to write. And I had to get it finished. And so I set up a writing room in the spare bedroom yeah. with a desk and everything and looking out the window. Um, but I used to, I write when I travel. I travel a lot and I like and I can write anywhere. Um, so I like to go to a hotel or to a coffee shop or to, you know, be sitting in the sta station or on a train or whatever. And you off like that and ride in the station. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there's something about the place. Yeah. And so I was in, I'm writing a story about Country House at the moment. I was in Kilroder at the weekend, me and those around. Fabulous. And I sat there and I sat there and wrote for an hour and got tons done. Yeah. So just out in their stable yard, you know, having a cup of coffee. So that's, that to me is, I love writing then. I think it's because... If you've only got a short period of time to do something in, you know, if you're mm. waiting for a train or you're on a train yeah. or a plane or whatever That's it is, the then you get, yeah, you get much more done. So do you, um, yeah, do you so write on a, a laptop then, Vanessa? Would yeah. you always have your laptop with you? Yeah, yeah always have my laptop with me. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, write on, write on it. Definitely. I, I plot by hand. So I would use like um, I have these yellow legal pads I use for plotting and scribbling and mind maps and stuff like yeah. that. And then and then it goes on to. Um, goes onto the laptop. So you use a mind map. Um, that's a technique. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I use yeah. all sorts of things. I've used yeah. them here. I've got one here next to me. Do you use vision boards? Um, yes. So um, you can see scribbles, the yellow thing. Yeah. Just loads of scribbles. So that's the, that's how we start. Yeah. And then I do. Um, I create um, a storyboard. That's on yeah. the dark room. Yeah. And um, there's all sorts of strange things on there. There's wow. a hotel that is yes. in um, Hare's Landing. And these are the characters, Caroline, and over here, Rachel. Over you here. base them on these people that you see. Yeah, and they're completely random people I've had on the internet. I'd say so you, you cut up plenty of magazines then, Vanessa, do you? Yeah, well, I usually find them on, I sell on the internet, so I'd be looking for a woman with brown hair or whatever. Right. But my problem is because I don't watch movies, I never know who anybody is. So yeah. quite often I end up with a famous face on there, and I have to be very careful when I you know, especially if they're supposed to have killed something. So you'd have that so, up there in front of you and it, it, this is what inspires you with your story. You can start kind of seeing it all coming yeah, together. it's very visual. Yeah, yeah and it really, visual. that really helps. And even mm. when I'm sticking the pictures down and making connections between yeah. things. Um, so I find that really useful. I try and do that for every book. Um, I haven't done one yet. I've got the bits for this book, but I haven't. And sometimes it's a digital storyboard. Yeah. So sometimes you keep I all the vision them. boards? Yeah, I've got a whole pile. There's about six of them here. And then... Yeah. Um, I've got digital ones as well. So for the, the book that's coming out in January, Remember My Name, I have a digital board. There, yeah, so. yeah. And do you find, is there a time that's best for you to write? As you probably just said, it's kind of whenever you can grab. A yeah, bit of whenever time. I can. Yeah. You travel quite you know, yeah. yeah. And if you're busy doing bits and pieces, then, you know, the work has to get done too. So it's, yeah. So you're just spitting this stuff around the edges. Yeah, yeah, of course, if you want this book. And like, do you think that you need a certain mindset or can you develop at this craft or is it something that you can be born with? What do you no, do? I think you can. I think you can learn it, yeah. it but it is. It can, as I say, it can take you longer than you think. I think if you've mm. got a creative mind and you're quite quite a creative person, and you look for story and you enjoy story, then absolutely, it's a case of learning the techniques. Yeah. Um, obviously, there are definitely some people who who are better than others earlier on, <laughs> faster. Um, but no, I think so. I think it's often it's it's to do with what your definition of success is too. So yeah. not everybody maybe is going to write a novel. Mm. um you know we sit down and write a hundred thousand words you know pretty much re write, write a hundred thousand words about five times is what you mm -hmm. do to write a book <laughs> so um you know 
yeah it might that might not be your thing it might be that you want to write a blog or you want mm. to do journalism or you want to do you know podcasts or you know, I mean, radio. novellas as well I love the anthology kind of side of writing or a novella is it a shorter version as well I mean there's all yeah, different, yeah. different types depending on how things. much you can write yeah yeah and I think it's a case of deciding well what is it you want what yeah. do you want to do mm. how do you want to reach readers and it doesn't have to be in a novel on the shelf mm. there are lots of other ways you know so yeah I'm just seeing your name there I love it. the little bones I mean where do you get the ideas for these stories the bones are found in a dress aren't they the yeah that was that was the I think the Stephen King talks about great story coming from the collision of two unrelated ideas and that was very much two unrelated ideas yeah. I listened to um I watched a tv documentary uh, years ago um about a girl it was a serving girl who had left Ireland she's pregnant she left Ireland to go and work in Manchester and she'd had a baby and she'd had it at night um, in a room that was shared with somebody else and somehow managed to keep quiet. The girl stayed asleep, kept everything quiet, and but the baby died and she left her in a suitcase under her bed. Yeah. And um, it's, a very, it's a very sad story. Mm -hmm. And um, then I heard another story uh, like four or five years later about a playwright in Cable Street who had written a, a play called The Country Dressmaker. And when he died, he left all his plays in a suitcase on his bed. And it was the beds and the suitcases that connected yeah. the two stories in my head. I was driving back from the airport. And by the time it was when before they built the M15, when I, by the time I got here, I had the bones of a baby hidden in the hem of a wedding dress. Because that's mm -hmm. what the girl who originally went to Manchester would have wanted more than anything else would be a yeah. wedding dress. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's how it came. And then I didn't even know how they got there at that point. Yeah. So I knew I had a story. That's the connection. Yeah. 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 So and it's like weird how ideas come. It's brilliant, yeah, and it's like from being out and about as well, because you're always in airports, you probably see things, think of things. Can I ask why do you think that it, it, you use it, the name of Sam Blake for your writing? Because my my full name is Vanessa Fox O'Loughlin, yeah. which is extremely long, um, would be a squish and a cover. And also O'Loughlin is great here in Ireland, but doesn't it's, it's tricky outside of Ireland because yeah. people can't pronounce it. Um, they don't know what to do with the GH in the middle when they get there. So I'm, I'm often introduced to events and they go Vanessa O and then they turn and look at me because they need me to fill in the rest. Um, so, um, yeah, so basically it's a case of having a name that doesn't, it doesn't travel. And um, also one that's hard to remember because if it's too long, it's difficult to remember. So mm. if you hear me on the radio or you happen to pick up this, and maybe people are listening to this on their earphones. Yeah. Um, I want them to be able to remember Sam Blake and then go, OK, Sam Blake, it's an easy one to remember. I could go and do you Google think it. Or... It's a unisex name as well. Was that deliberate? Very important, yeah, yeah. because there's this, there is, was, it sounds like a mad theory that men don't buy books written, crime novels written by women. Yeah. But in fact, there was some, The Guardian did some research. There was an article by, um, who was it? Um, anyway, a very big article there just yeah. a little while ago about, yeah, saying it's true. <laughs> so you know, I say it at events mm. and it sounds mad. And there's always somebody at the back goes, oh, no, that's right. My but, uncle does. Yeah, call, you know. I mean, you could have gone with Sam Fox as well, but then I, obviously that would be our Vanessa Fox. Sam yeah, Fox. Well, there are call, we start off with Sam Fox with a page three girl called then Sam Fox. Then you're thinking of page three girl, I know. Yeah, back in the day, so we thought maybe we'd avoid that one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, oh, that's, I was just wondering why you do that. And is there any advice that you'd give to new emerging writers and that somebody you wish someone had told you? Um, well, they just keep writing is the most yeah. important thing, you mm. know, really, really stick to it. Um, and I just think just I suppose keep the faith just to keep if it's what you want to do. Yeah, you need you have to give it time. Nobody else is going to do it for you. It is hard work. Um, it's a lot of hours, a lot of hours. I mean, you are never, ever going to get paid. I suppose that's something else. You're never going to get paid for the time that you put in for, into it. Yeah. Um, so you don't do it for money. You do it for yeah. life. You do it because you're a storyteller mm. and um, and you've got a story to tell. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that. When that happens and when you get when when the story starts evolving in your head and you've got characters talking to you and things happening and you can see the pictures you have to put it down the page yeah um and i'm at that stage now with a book where i'm just starting to get excited about it and bits and oh, it's brilliant living in my head the whole time and now i'm, yeah. I'm at, eager to sit down and write it so would you write a book every year vanessa uh, at least one yeah so would sometimes I've, i did um I'm, this is my second one this year yeah um, i wrote one at the start of the year and um and in between writing them obviously I'm editing and then mm. promoting the other books so. yeah you have a lot on your plate there's a lot of competition out there isn't there there's some <laughs> fantastic writers arising yeah. from everywhere there is there is but it's different actually writing is different because it's different from business because you can produce the same product in business but in writing everybody's voice is unique yeah so every author is different and we all mm. have different takes and <clears throat> excuse me I think people readers 
um, enjoy you and your voice mm. and, and your storytelling. So they tend to stick with you, which is great. So, yeah. And I know you help a lot of authors with the manuscripts. Have you seen any manuscripts coming in about COVID? Has anything, anyone started writing about COVID? I know. Yeah, there was, always, there was a feeling. Mm. Yeah, there was a feeling of, of trying to avoid it. And then yeah. um, and then Catherine Ryan Howard's written a yeah. book called 50 Days About COVID. But there's not very many people who have tackled it, actually, because I think... I think they'll come. <laughs> yeah, they might do. I think it's the background to stuff or post-COVID. There's a lot of books, you know, you, you not a lot of people will necessarily want to read about it and be reminded of it. Not yet. I think it's, it's too uh, soon, yeah, I think, yet. isn't it, maybe? Yeah. yeah. But we're still coming out of it, but we're getting there. And can you yeah, name, are you reading any books? Have, can you name three books beside your bedside table? Well, yeah, I bought them down, actually, but I've more you probably have 33. So <laughs> I'll flash them past. So that's, this is a proof of the latest Karen Slaughter book. Um, yeah. I'll find the title for you. Um, False Witness, it's called. Yeah, so, lovely. Okay, yeah. I'm reading that. Um, I'm also reading Joanne Harris's new book, A Narrow Door. Isn't that a beautiful cover? Okay, um, yeah. She, is doing murder one for us um in november so um i'm dying to I want to get through that yeah i'm reading an agatha christie murder is easy wow love it. yeah and that's the book i'm writing at the moment is similar to that and then i'm reading this one no honor which is by avish khan who's an, um who's a writer from lahore who i'm interviewing next week yeah um yeah. because i'm doing talking to a panel of um writers from dublin from cities of literature so i'm yeah. from dublin yeah. He's from Lahore. I'm talking to somebody from Dunedin, Sandra Simmons from Dunedin. Very interesting. And, um, yeah, lovely uh, cover, isn't it? From, yeah, from Reykjavik. So, and the three of us, that's the great, the beauty of Zoom is the three of us can come together. It's yeah. we're in completely different time zones. So, yeah, so I need to get that one ready. It's a nice cover. And do you think, like, covers are so important for the book, aren't they? Yeah, vital. It's really, really important. To yeah. I'm really blessed, actually. The Remember My Name cover, which is coming in January, is gorgeous. And I have a, a digital book out at the moment called High Pressure, yeah. which is sort of a spiderweb book. So I wrote the three series, Cat Connolly series books, which are the top there behind me, yeah. Little Bones. And then I've written some standalones, but they're all in the same world. Yeah. Um, and High Pressure is a book, it's a story that sort of links them. So there's characters from both sides, from standalones mm. and from the um, series books that people yeah on the go okay yeah if anyone doesn't know vanessa fox which i'm sure lots of people do where can people find you where's the best place to find um you? so the best place to find me is sam blake books and yeah. i'm sam blake books on everything so yeah. um it's sam blake is mm -hmm. the website and sam blake books on facebook twitter and instagram so okay maybe. and then you're writing dot ie as well and writing dot ie yeah, is a huge very important a huge resource yeah, yeah for, for that, Sam, Vanessa, Vanessa, Sam, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate all these tips, and I'm sure people who listen to this will appreciate them too. Thank you so much. Delighted, lovely to talk to you. Nice to be on the other side as well, isn't it? The interviewing. Absolutely. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Please to answer questions. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone wants to contact me, I'm across most social media platforms, and these videos will be on YouTube. And I'll see you next time on the Writer's Mindset. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Take care. Thank you.